taking on Bordeaux today are also in the same boat. Missing four starting players from their lineup. A true test of depth here in round eight of the Top Quartos. Bonjour everyone and welcome back along to Montpellier career mode with today Bordeaux versus Montpellier in a battle of the injured. Yes, both teams missing four players tonight and it is Bordeaux missing, I think, possibly bigger names, especially guys like Cruz Malia out the midfielder for 36 days. Also, hooker May Nadia, who is out for a couple more days. Tabadza, the prop, is out for, geez, a long time, 76 days. And the fourth, also not injury involved, but Jono Lance is away international duty with Australia, I guess. If we had our Australian, Tate McDermott, he would be off with the Wallabies as well. But instead, he's injured, along with Watson, Wadago, and Bello. So changes had to be made, especially in this back row. We've kind of fixed things up here. Placines at six, Kamada at seven, and Joseph staying at number eight. Of course, no McDermott means Paylard comes in to start at scrum half. Heron runs things again in the number 10 jumper, which is always good to have that depth in the position of the playmaker. For the Bordeaux side, well, another player's missing, and you can see straight away Doobie and Lammer out there midfield, missing a guy like Juan Cruz Malia is a big, big loss. Cordero still there on the right wing, of course, and they have some decent little players in this forward pack as well. Walkie, especially Diaby, Jans van Rensburg, Douglas, some special names in the side. And there's one that we wanted to pick up. Yes, Joseph Dweaver was on the hit list, but we couldn't pull him in to the bright lights of Montpellier. But all in all, though, we look set, ready, and both sides a little bit beat up. The benches who, well, the way this season's turned will be very, very important. And it's interesting to see names like Tommy Afuna, Kovalas, Pitti, Ioani, Yellow Bear, Lamb, all on the bench of this Bordeaux side. That is a stacked bench to come on and make an impact. For our side of things on Montpellier, not much has changed here. We've really quite tried to cover positions here. You may know 19 and 20. Willemser and Geelong both can play back row and second row. With well, the last episode, we lost two back rowers, and we had to really put a second rower into that back row to make things work. Today, hopefully, and for the rest of the season, we will avoid that happening again. Merritt comes in because we don't have that ability of switching Bello around to scrum half if we get an injury to our number nine. So we're going to have that replacement. Merrick and Skinner as well as Malins for the front row. Hubbard Archer Gomez and Gilbert to Sally. Let's get ready to crack this one underway. It will be, of course, Bordeaux in the red and Montpellier in the blue. Let's get down to the action. Kickoff is imminent. We are the away team today, which is going to make this even tougher. We've seen the form against the away sides very, very grim. So let's see if we can turn that around. Pela gets it away. Garado, we're going to look for someone to kick up. And Heron has gone straight through a massive hole. Now he gets his kick away. He's in a foot race with Tuana. And it is the scrum half who wins the race back. And we get up and turn this over. Would be fantastic, but this. No chance in a rainy day of that happening. They're trying to run it out now, our oh, Bordeaux. And it's with Sertini who tries and very successfully as well. More the way outfield with the Bordeaux pack. Now off the back is a strong run from Manesi. He's got it to the dead side where Walker chips a delicate little touch over the sideline on the bounce. A nice touch finder just over the halfway line and a very, very, well, exciting start to this matchup. Struggling to describe that one. It's been end-to-end -end sort of stuff. Both sides having a stab and both sides making easy errors on the defensive work. Here is Heron looking for the rim out wide. Finds a stand, Penavani. Now we look out to the left-hand side. Rollhart doesn't quite get the bounce. Has to dive on it, squish it like a bug. We continue on the left-hand side. Gerardo looking for Mopepe. He can't get the king involved. We'll keep it tidy in. Joseph goes to proceed. We'll pace on him as well. Go, Bonalamope. And we've got the try. Placid 
Gets the buzz, and that is what we can do. The back row finally working, and who's on hand? Yes, we've talked about this many times before. Key players standing up, and La Mape certainly is one of those. We tried to get the Pimpy in the action there. The better earlier we can do that, the better. And uh, this time it was switched out. Back to the open side. And then, man, Nagani Lamape with a superb finish. He's always there in support. And it says the likes of Padavani up in the line as well. The Pimpy likes to get in the action off the shoulder. We have a good team here. If we keep this core together, we could be in for quite an outstanding season. Of course, Heron. Now in the number 10 jumper, he's made a good start to his return to the starting lineup as well. A half line break, finding a big kick to touch. And now, of course, sparking the back line into action off the set piece earlier in that play. 7 0 Lewis Montpellier up with the lead, 12 minutes gone. Let's try and double that lead for Seeds. Gets it away to here and once more, looking for more space here on this left hand side. Lamape, oh, they bounced up, they're in trouble. Lamape's left for dust though. Very good break here from the Bordeaux side. And he sees the man who finally does take it to ground. Pick and go here from Tulala. Meets Paylag. Welcome to the game. The set is an easy again. He takes off the back now. Switching it wide as Diaby. Gets a nice seat to Release. And another quick ball there to Douglas. Release. Yeah, heavy tackle there from the Montpellier defense. Switch back inside from Tuala. And no one interested in getting involved there as laying on the ground was Jens van Rensburg. Now to the open side. Play gets a nice ball away. And into the midfield they go. Beautiful glamour and bolt. And he sparks up towards the 22. Quality player. It's Remy Lamarant. Again, nothing on there for Tuala. Nice little player just about. Breaking through it was an easy once more. Fleaver. Danger. Lamarant out wide, Cordero. Back and field, they go again through Walker. Just shake it. Back to the outside. Big Charles Cordero. Numbers are everywhere for Bordeaux. Derby in their final stage, almost doing the job, but it's a touch. Will go, in fact, Derby staying with the action. Wow, we were lucky there. Let's try and clear this one away from our goal line, would be brilliant. At the back we go. And away to Heron down the short side, and that is a very tight angle. Don't quite get the action on it, and it's fired away from Bros. Now a chance for Lamaran. Gets on the outside. Here he is again, Doobie. Looking to go down that sideline channel. Can't find support, but the support players coming quickly to help the breakdown. What a run here from Walker. Just a bell going alone, but put it to touch desperately at the end from the Montpellier defence. And just like that, my friends, we're back with a five minute line out. Let's see what we can do this time. Capelli goes short here and runs things. Straight at the defence, hammers at the touch. Sean Breeze carries it late. The payload gives the low five to Heron and shows him exactly the trajectory of that ball. This is an interesting line-out concoction here from Bordeaux. Time for Vanua has gone way back. Dweeber, oh, he's giving it away. They look forward, Paylard's picked it up. Lamarpe has to work with it. And he's hit hard and he's driven backwards and Bordeaux goes straight over the top of him. Big turnover play there to Arla. Big injury. RC Tuala is going to the sidelines. And that may open up their back line because Tuala has been hogging everything in this match so far tonight. Arnett comes on. And let's see what a difference he can Crouch. make. Bind. Here comes Sit. the reserves. First entry of the night. Right, Arnett. Holds it up. Now he delivers it out wide. Cordero looking to get around the Pippa. And he does half a job as well. Excellent run there from Santiago Cordero. Electric player. Now they open up through the midfield. Toby once more. Oh, just saved there from Dorado. And it's been all pulled out so far in this first half. A great start from Montpellier. And a blockbusting run. Wide Walker try. But give this one to the army. He caused all the mayhem through our defensive line and it gave the easy finish out to Walker 
What's this? Derby bro broke us in half, but what's the army here? He's a ginger, there he is. Bang, bang, bang! Get out of the way! Then a fired ball out wide, and we had no one watching that player, Walker, because we were just watching our playing team get squashed from the army. Not ideal, let's be honest, but that has been a long time coming. Big pressure from Bordeaux. And oh, that's a shaky one there from Sertini, but over it goes. And this Bordeaux side, we know they're not bad because we've seen them up in the top three for most of the season. I think the injuries to the likes of Malia have cost them as they've plummeted very quickly from second or third down to ninth in the matter of two or three weeks. So let's make sure we keep them plummeting as halftime rings and the Pippi drags them all in. Joseph Howard in the tackle. He's going to get absolutely smashed off this here, surely. No way we're holding on to that. Terrible work as a breakdown. Advantage. That's knocked on from Doobie. Do we hold this? We will. Capelli spots Benarus. And the big tight end prop goes rumbling into action. Paylag held out of that play. Capelli. Oh, that's high. That is high. We'll take three things, Rev. Give us the ball right now. Well, that's poor from Cordero giving away a chance like that and we will not scoff at this opportunity no chance about that this is a three easy three for here and we know what this guy offers second season and this is a really tough breeze actually i'm glad it's not any further out than this if this was up near halfway it would be an absolute nightmare but 30 odd 35 meters out should be okay here heron chops it over let's go have some oranges it's 10-7 montpellier that's what I like to see. A gift from Cordero. And we say thank you very much as we hit to halftime. Well, it has been an action-packed opening 14 minutes here between Bordeaux and Montpellier. Both sides had chances, but it's been the home team that have dominated the early goings of it, really. We got an early try, and we kind of got snuffed out after that as the Bordeaux Bigler side just completely took us to the cleaners. Shutting down inside our 22. We scrambled some kicks away, but they just come rumbling straight back. And you can see by the tackle count exactly how that's been going. Double the tackles, over double the tackles, and then made twice the line breaks we have as well. How are they not leading this one? I don't know, but they should have. Probably two or three tries at least from that first 40 minutes of domination. Let's see if we get into the game and extend not only the lead tonight, but also our winning streak here in season three. So this is the eighth game of our season. It's very quickly going by us as we ready for Europe as well. That is a big mark on this season's calendar. Second half gets back underway. Brett Heron going high looking for Ratiz, who we hardly even talk about anymore. Mapipi's the man, that Police. is for sure. As we try and disrupt the uh, time at the ruck. And in the end, it's a kick away. Down towards Mapimpi, who gets it on the bounce and gets a nice little kick away, or pass away, I should say, to Reinhardt. And it's turned over from Bordeaux, and they slipped it quickly out wide. Walker up against the tags. Oh, Monstead! Oh, put that one in the high lows reel. Shannon Walker eats a monster hit from Vincent Ratiz. Oh, I love this. Pace race out wide, tried to get a little bit fancy. Oh, it was almost Crouch. high, but I don't care. Find. It was awesome to watch. Sit. We've got the scrum feed. That is a very good shove too from our forwards. Right on the money. Okay, let's go. Dummy skip pass. I love getting in the action here on these ones. Hear it. The way to roll hack. Strikes things up and that's high. The Pimpy was about to come back. And we've been given a gift back the other way. Man, we don't get too many chances to play the set pieces. And I just saw my Pimpy out the corner of the screen on the left. There is a massive breeze on this. Surely Heron can get this one floating. Okay, we look like absolute idiots, or do we? Or do we? No, we don't. Heron is a magician. That was very nice. A very nice kick away from Brett Heron. Of course, it was a penalty. We get the line out thrown. 
Right, Gerardo. Hit the man in the middle. That's it. Paylag. Heron trying to cut off. Lamarpe! Lamarpe stands her. Oh, no! Oh, no! That was a gimme try! Lamarpe was hitting the line on the inside. And Heron goes off. It's one Englishman for another. Heron out. Skinner in. Oh. I don't know what's more annoying about that, the fact that we got an injury or the fact that we bombed a certain try if the pass went to hand. Laomape is an amazing support runner. He is always there when you make a break. Crouch. So Bind. good to see. But Set. seven points. <gasps> Gone begging. <laughs> Let's try another step play, shall we? Let's try a classic. Uh, oh, I like this one. Skinner. Ralag back towards Mipimpi. Mipimpi should be swung. Oh, come on! That's three in a row, referee. Send these filthy mugs off. What on earth is going on here at Bordeaux? We need to stop bashing the keyboard. The game's getting confused. You know what, you filthy mugs? I want another scrum. Crouch. Bind. Right center field. Will we go left? Will we go right? Oh, Sit. you don't know. I don't know either, to be fair. I don't actually know where set play will go. We literally, we couldn't be more. Centre field. Oh no, I've taken too long. I was deciding what to do. We're going to land him a Pimpy instead. That Marcus Ola will say, Don't worry about set pieces. Just give me the ball and I'll run in for a try. Wow, that was a little bit anticlimactic. It wasn't coming up where I wanted to play the set piece. In the end, Val Palard just gave it to a Pimpy. I think we were so centre field, the game was like, Well, I don't know where to play the play. Just. Do it yourself. So he did. And when you got a guy like that, King Mpimpi, on your wing, well, it makes life rather easy, doesn't it? Just give it to him, and he makes stuff happen. So Skinner's on the team now. 15 points to 7. Bordeaux will need to score twice. And that will take them back the lead. But Skinner's on fire. Oh, we've got some great depth in this side. 17 7 to score, work to do for Bordeaux. Of course, they've got the one injury as well. Tuala going off, Arnett coming on. Here is Sutini to kick things off. He's gone very short there. Straight into contact, guys, for the scenes. And if we can hold on, I would like to kick it away. But no, well, no, no, we've just lost it. Just have the ball back. Arnett with a run. Maylag makes it look like a fool. Get up, Paylag! You lazy little sausage! Another round from Diaby, he's been phenomenal tonight. Wilkie, well, we haven't seen his name much as well. Here's Cordero! What a round there from Santiago Cordero! Making his way with power up towards the 22. Now there's trouble. Arnett got another couple of meters. Padavani flourishing, coming up into the line defensively. We've got to look out though. Lamarant and Derby certainly are troublesome players. How is that not a bit of a turnover? I was going to say, how is that not a penalty? Rollhart, get rid of it. He's done well. Lamar Pelis, the chase is into the wind. It was set up for Boros here, and he takes a heavy hit. Penalty ref. Release. Penalty ref, come on. We had a man on that ball for half an hour. And you give us nothing. Lamarat. Well, that is a good round for Boros. Puts them back on the front foot. A dummy in it. Second chance run there for Lamarat. Has two nubbles at it. Here is Arnott. No one wants to join that ruck whatsoever. Pick and go, Anisi this time. They've pretty much got more ginger back row. It's quite hard to tell whether it's Anisi. Oh, wow. Or whether it's the RV having run. Dweaver got decked there. Here's Arnott. Got Walker. Dropped very quickly. Arnott again just manages to sneak through half a tackle. Dweaver, is a side player, hitting the line hard now, looking for Warwick as walking. Arnott once more, and again, it is all Bordeaux. Susini having a charge. Can they bust through? They need to do it quickly, because time is running out. Oh my goodness, it's 77 gone. That is insane. Off folks, the army, look out. Fantastic player, and again, it's Arnott who picks and goes. It is all Bordeaux. We 
get a good start to the half and then they take over. Working to the left. Walker turning around, Lamoran finding a bit of room out wide for Cordero. Steps inside for scenes, but is it brought from the King Mbibi? Arnott, Nancy, short, and a good run, a good carry from Diaby. Still going! Walker's back there again! That is a great carry. This back row for Bordeaux is something else, and that is why we can't touch the ball. They're fast, they're powerful. Leah Diaby and Warwick carrying like that. It is impossible to stop these guys. Tarnit held up again the tackle from Capelli. And this time it's Douglas going for a bit of run. Finding player. Here is Sutini. Great ball! And surely the try is there, Diaby! He is brilliant! Well class blindside flanker! Mahamadou Darby! Diaby has scored one of the great top 14 tries this season. And it's not just the final play. There's the short ball. Satini, great offload. And Diaby through the pathetic tackle of Padovani. And dots down under the sticks. Well. They probably regret not giving this guy the ball a lot more during the match, Bordeaux, because he was simply phenomenal. But it will not be enough as we are almost 10 minutes over time. The penalty goal right on half time from Cordero's penalty has been the difference as Montpellier grab another away win. Unlikely results against a very good Bordeaux side. But they've done enough to get a bonus point. We take the four on the other hand. But boy, some stars were born. Magnificent work rate from Diaby and Anixi. And we question what's going to happen to Tuala. We probably won't see him again for a while. But on the scoreboard, it is 14-17. Montpellier walk home with their heads held high. That was a tough match, but we knew we had the lead. Ten points going to those final ten minutes. It was always in our advantage with that sort of lead. Not enough time for Bordeaux to get their tries over. They had to work hard, and it took them a long time to put points on the board. Tries for Diaby and Walker, and let's be honest, Walker's try was all because of Diaby as well. And Sutini put over two conversions from two attempts. Our scoreboard's a little bit wonky, isn't it? Mapimpi and Lamape. I tell you what, when you talk about fantastic import signings, you talk about Mapimpi and Lau Mape. The difference they've made to this team is outstanding. Heron and Skinner, the two English boys, nabbing a conversion each. And of course, the difference maker on half time, that penalty goal to Brett Heron. We're running this game, lads. We just, we shouldn't have won it, let's be honest. But we took those few chances we had when we had them. That was the difference. Start of the halves, they were slow out of the blocks. We took a try in each, and of course, like I've said a million times, that half-time penalty goal proving to be the difference. But look at that, 76 position and territory to Bordeaux. Man, we almost made triple the tackles. Never before have I seen it that high. And of course, seven line breaks to four. But in the end, all that matters is that top line. Bordeaux 14, Montpellier 17. And of course, another injury. So it means another piece of mail. And Brett Heron, he's fractured his jaw. I've got no words for that, but we're going to be looking at another starting fly half for, is this the third consecutive game? Next episode will be another number 10 in that jersey. That is crazy. He's out for 16 weeks. Wow. That's mad. So we've got changes to make in the, the team there. Who's close to coming back? Because someone was only about 20 odd days. McDermott, 15 days, a couple more games. Wow. Bellow, though. Whoa, he's only one day away. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. We couldn't play a day later and he could come straight back in. Instead, we have to either go with Skinner or we do still have... Where is he? Down the list here. Darmon in that team as well. So, one of those two are going to come in. Maybe we'll go with... Jeez, do we go with Skinner? Probably go with Skinner. I'll leave Malins on the bench. Not change anything else because this team is winning. And that is what is insane about this. Skinner on. He knows the role. He's not been great at 12, but maybe with Lau Mape and Rollhark outside, his, his old buddy and Paylag there at number 10 could prove the difference for his season. Heron's out for a long time, so let's get him into this list. Who's going to go down the bottom? God, I don't know. I'm going to be better off. Um, let's slowly trickle his way up here. 
90 days. We will get McDermott back soon. Next episode will be the return. Well, the one after will be the return of Bello. He'll be fit at the end of next episode. Uh, but Bello will be back into the team. Now, hopefully, shore things up a little bit because they're starting to get a little bit slim for that number 10 jumper. But still, of course, got Darmon to come. Of course, I need to do that. Don't I, Skinner? You can do all those duties. Don't worry about that. Let's have a look at the competition. Next up to Toulouse. Now, after that, Europe. So, a bit concerned, but happy we'll have Bello back for that. We're into third. How good. We've jumped another spot up over Toulon. And we are starting, well, we're starting to look like we're contenders. Clermont is something else. That team is ridiculous. Five points here to start front, say. They're two ahead of us. They lost in their last game. We're on a three-game winning streak. Not the best in the competition, though. No. Toulon have that with four. And look at this cast team down the bottom. Wow. Five on the trot with an L. Bordeaux, we've given their second consecutive loss. And you see all these teams down here are on losing streaks, which is bad for them. But we're on the other side of things, hopefully, to get better. Asia doing very well. Two wins in a row now. Have rocketed up that table. Didn't we smoke them like an episode ago? Yeah, 31-7. Now look at them. Insane. Change of form. They're good. Power up here as well. Breathe. This is a real topsy-turvy table. Come on, though. The team to beat. I won't dribble on too long. We'll look forward to next episode where Toulouse are coming to our house to play Montpellier, of course. As we look to, I guess, solidify our place inside that top three. Toulon, uh, right below us and Toulouse, right below that. So we're playing fifth uh, when we are book holding that Toulon side in the middle. So big match for our season and a big match every week for season three. I'll see you all next time. But until then, thank you all for tuning in and watching. Hope you enjoyed the video today. And of course, as always, take care.